are just spread out so so evenly here. We got some in the back corners there and some there, so you guys got plenty of room. And welcome to you who are watching from home this morning. We're glad to have you with us too. Well, everybody was saying, oh, you're going to talk about reincarnation. Oh, do you know this is the first lesson I've ever done since Bob and I became ministers in 2002? I've never done a lesson on reincarnation. And I thought, I think it's time, you know? And there's a lot of people who seem to be interested in it. So that's what we're going to talk about. And we're going to discuss it further uh, afterwards at the spiritual cafe over in the fellowship room. So I hope you'll join us so that we can carry the conversation on and I can hear from you about your experiences too. Back in 1988, Bob and I attended uh, this class on past life regression. And um, it was taught by, in Chicago by a man named uh, Gregory Paxson. And uh, on the very last day of the class, he said he was going to do a past life regression with us. And um, I had my doubts at that point, you know, that anything would happen. Um, so anyway, he goes through taking us through this process of relaxation. And um, I was very much aware of, the, of, well, am I doing this right? you know, that type of thing. And uh, he kept taking us a little bit further down because it is hypnosis. And um, he said, I'd like you to go to a lifetime that was pleasant for you, that it was f filled with joy. And so all of a sudden I, I was there and he guided us through this process. He said, um, okay, uh, what do you look like and what are you wearing? And, and he said, look down at your feet and what kind of shoes are you wearing? And I remember looking down and I couldn't see my feet. And I realized I was a bit portly. <laughs> and so I had to bend over to see my feet. And uh, I looked at my hands, and there was black hair on my hands. And um, so the questions continued, well, what are you doing? Who are you? Um, and I realized, I, he said, what do you have on? And I said, I have a, un you know, I have a uniform on. And it began to come together that I was a beat cop. And um, so then as we progressed, he took me through, or took us through this lifetime. And he said, go to a time when you're enjoying your time with your family. It's a good time for you. And I saw myself on a, uh, watching my wife at that time and my three little boys on a carnival ride, you know, a merry-go-round. And I felt so much joy of being there with my children and my beautiful wife, who I later found out was Bob. <laughs> beautiful blonde. <clears throat> anyway, um, then he said, picture yourself at the table. You're having your meal with your family. And um, so, he mentioned looking around the table, you know, at that point and finding out if any of the people in your current life uh, were there in that lifetime. And of course, I realized Bob, you know, was my wife. But my youngest son was my father in this lifetime. And I thought that was interesting. So anyway, I saw it very clearly uh, and then he said, I'd like to take you to the time of your, your death in that lifetime. So I went to that time and I was in bed and my family was gathered around me. And 
um, it was a pleasant passing. It was very peaceful. And as I rose up, he said, now, as you rise up from your body, look down and see where it is that you were living in that lifetime. Where, see a map and just locate where you were living. And I clearly, you know, it was like pulling back from the, the earth and then all of a sudden zeroing in and it was Belfast, Ireland. Oh, I thought that's very interesting. And he said, what was your name in that lifetime? And the name John Amos came to me. And I have to admit, I thought John Amos to be a first name and middle name because I, you know, I very seldom ever heard of somebody with a last name, name of Amos. But anyway, it, it was a fascinating experience and I thought later, you know, there's no way I could have made this up. I mean, look, if I was going to come up with a past life, I would have, you know, created something really exciting and, and, you know, Cleopatra or, you know, some crazy thing. But I would never have come up with the idea of being a, a beat cop in Belfast, Ireland. I promise you that. So anyway, um, <clears throat> since then I've studied and researched the idea of reincarnation. And um, back in 2000, oh, when Bob and I were living in Florida at, in Hollywood, uh, I learned about Brian Weiss. How many of you read any books by Brian? Okay, good. Yes, he's a, a noted authority on past life regression, and it's interesting how he discovered it, because he didn't, didn't really um, believe in reincarnation until he had a client that came to him for some anxiety problems that she was having. And as part of her uh, hypnosis, he asked her to go back to a time, and he figured in her present life, where she first experienced this feeling. So she went back in time in the hypnosis, and she kept going. And he asked her, so where are you now, and what is the date? And she said, it's in the 1600s. So for somebody who didn't believe in reincarnation and they get that and he questioned her and and got a lot of you know specific information about that and so he became a believer and he went on to work with her further for quite some time and recorded the information uh, that she gave so back in 2005 i decided that i was going to start doing past life regressions myself. And um, <clears throat> I decided one of the first that I would do was Bob's. It's always nice having a husband who doesn't mind <laughs> being <laughs> experimented on. <laughs> but anyway, Bob's experience turned out qu quite well. And I think he'll uh, admit that. Um, I t he'd had a problem with his shoulder and he had gone to a chiropractor, and the chiropractor said, well, you know, let's make appointments for you three times a week for the next couple of months, and it should go away. And um, so I said, well, let's, let's try a past life regression and see if it's tied to anything that might have happened in one of your past lives. And so I took him back, and sure enough, there was a lifetime where he was a soldier, he was being chased, and he came through this one area, and from behind, somebody had a sword, and basically on that shoulder. So I asked him, did you die in that? And he says, well, I pretty much bled out, so I guess. 
said, well, then I guess that was your death in that lifetime. But anyway, what happened was after that past life regression, he had no more problems with his shoulder. So by connecting with that lifetime and, and getting an understanding of what happened, um, he no longer had to worry about going three times a week to the chiropractor. Saved us quite a bit of money. <laughs> anyway, so what is reincarnation? Well, it's, it's basically from the idea that our souls within us, the soul is us, and we, w we have a body. So the soul is that part of us that's eternal, that goes on. And the body, of course, is just like, it's like taking off a pair of clothes, you know, just removing those clothes after we pass and replacing them with something different. Now, why, why do we choose to do that? Well, there's a number of reasons that we do, and it can be maybe regret at something from a past life that we wish we'd done, uh, or something we did that we would like to do differently. Also, it can uh, be a way to bring closure or healing to a relationship. So if you have somebody in your lifetime and, um, maybe they passed more quickly than you had a chance to heal that relationship. You may find that you're coming back again in another lifetime with that same soul to heal that relationship. It's also about soul growth and quest for perfection. And the other thing is did not complete their mission. So if you were given a mission when you came into this lifetime or chose a mission for yourself, if you didn't achieve that, then chances are you may return. And karma, of course, we've all heard about karma. And I've talked to Bob and I think he's gonna do a talk on karma and grace. So, <clears throat> right? <laughs> He's enthusiastic about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, a number of different religions believe in reincarnation, and most of them are the Eastern uh, countries. Uh, Buddhism, and they are on a quest for nirvana, and nirvana happens after you've come to a place where you feel at one with the universe and are able to release the cycle of rebirth. Hinduism is another religion that believes in reincarnation. Um, and theirs is about the karma, the feeling guilt or, or shame about something and being punished for it by having to come back and live maybe as a person that you mistreated in your current life. Sikhism, Sufism, which is a mys mystical Islam religion. <coughs> Sorry about that. And mystical Jewish traditions also believe in reincarnation. <coughs> oh, thank you. <coughs> Now, what about Christianity? Well, it's interesting, but back in the early stages of Christianity, they believed in reincarnation. It was part of their belief system. But, and that, that was up until 550 AD, or BCE as it's called now. And that's when the Second Council of Constantinople met and decided that this type of belief should be thrown out, and they considered it hearsay. So 
it disappeared from all the teachings of the Christian religion at that point. However, today, um, about 25% of Christians believe in reincarnation. So that's quite a, quite a few. And as far as the population in the United States, 25% of people here <coughs> also believe, in, overall in the country, believe in reincarnation. So what does Jesus in the Bible say about reincarnation? Well, you're, you can have a handout before you leave today. Can I get a copy of that, Bob? That <clears throat> There's a, if you read the Bible and um, look at some of the passages, you'll see that there's messages that don't actually say reincarnation, but allude to the fact that it does exist. <clears throat> and especially Jesus mentions some things that if you really read it and think about it, he's referring to reincarnation. <clears throat> For instance, uh, he asked his disciples, who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And that's from Matthew. And then a little bit later he says, but I tell you, Elijah has already come. And they did not recognize him. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. So I think that pretty well says it. All right. Charles Fillmore <clears throat> also believed in reincarnation. And for, for those of you who don't know, Charles Fillmore is one of our co-founders here at Unity. And Bob, would you hand me those two books? <clears throat> In the book, Discover the Power Within You, which was the last book that we did the book study on, um, <clears throat> in the second to the last chapter, there is a, uh, it's a chapter on reincarnation. And <clears throat> I'll read you just a, a little bit of what, what Charles Fillmore says about reincarnation. When man loses his body by death, the law of expression works with him for re-embodiment, and he takes to himself a new body. The divine law allows him to keep trying until he learns to live aright, and man will do this by overcoming sin, sickness, old age, and finally death. When these are eliminated, reincarnation will be no more. <clears throat> the thing, <clears throat> can I have a Kleenex? Sorry, I think my allergies are <laughs> kicking in. Um, <clears throat> when I think about reincarnation, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you didn't need to hear that, did you? <clears throat> <clears throat> when you think about some things that uh, in life, such as child prodigies. And it's always amazed me when I see some of these children who at the age of two or three can do incredible things. And you think, now, how is that? How can they have that ability at such a young age? And it made sense to me when I learned about reincarnation was that this was a skill, a talent, a gift that they had from a past life. 
and, were, and that was carried into their current life. <clears throat> the other question I had was um, about children or babies who die quickly, don't live very long. And I, my question was for God. Well, God, this, this child didn't have a chance to live a full life. But then, here again, when I found out about reincarnation, I thought, oh, could it be possible that that child had a purpose to just come into lifetime for a couple of days or weeks or months or years and then pass on? but then re-enter another body at a later time and live a long, long life. So all of these things began to make more and more sense to me. And I began to <clears throat> really formulate my feeling uh, about reincarnation and, and how it works. Have you ever had a situation where you've uh, had deja vu you know, go, go to some place and it looks familiar to you, but you don't know why. And you think, well, I've, I've never been here, so why do I feel like I know this place? Or it's a person. Maybe you meet a person and you just feel that sense of connection and you've never met them before. How many of you felt that? Yeah, it's quite natural. It happens all the time. So here again, that is, you are seeing perhaps the soul of that person, not just the physical body, but you're connecting with the soul of that person. <clears throat> well, yesterday on Facebook, as I was preparing this talk for today, I uh, <clears throat> I realized something that I had done just the night before and I wanted to share it with y'all uh, as I was finishing up on this lesson. And what I had done after I had the, re, uh, the past life regression back in the 80s, I never really researched or anything because it was so real to me doing it. And somebody said, well, why don't you look, you know, do some research and find out in, in Ireland if there's an Amos family. And, I, you know, it just really wasn't important to me. So I never did. And, of course, back in the 80s, things were a little different as far as computers, the Internet, and research and that type thing. But I did that this week. I got on and it was on, on Twitter, and I did a search, and I found a John Amos in Belfast, Ireland, and he's a paramedic. So I have contacted him, I sent a message to him. Now it said he didn't accept messages, but I hope he will. I'd like to find out if he had a relative back in the uh, <clears throat> 1880s, or mid, I guess 1850, it was around the time, I think, that it was when that lifetime was. So I, we will see, hopefully, if there is a connection there. So, but I wanted to just share that with you. All right, well, the most important thing as I conclude this, isn't so much what happens to you in a past life. <clears throat> Charles Fillmore points this out, you know, that idea that we get caught up in what happened in our past lives. It's nice to find out, it's interesting, and there are some things that can be helped, medical conditions that can be helped with this or relationships um, that can be healed through past life regression. But the most important thing is here today, in this lifetime. So even if you decide you want to have a past life regression or anything, enjoy it and then move on. 
and be present in your life today because that's what's really important. That's what counts. And perhaps that may determine what happens in your next lifetime. So, namaste. <clears throat>